which is of course not holding back and it has now started to impose sanctions on Western nations. Russia has warned of freezing US assets in the country. The West stands to lose assets worth at least $288 billion. In recent developments, tensions between the US and Russia have intensified, leaving the global community on edge. The escalating conflict has now reached an economic battleground, with a series of strategic moves taking place on both sides. However, the latest actions from Russia have stirred up an even greater storm. In a shocking turn, Putin has responded to U.S. sanctions with a direct countermeasure, leading to a dramatic shift in the economic landscape. This new step threatens the balance of international financial systems and poses a significant challenge to the U.S.'s global dominance. Join us today as we unpack the latest news. Breaking. Putin has gone nuclear. He has had enough. But before we delve into the details, let's take a look at a fundamental aspect fueling this conflict. The U.S. Repo Act. This unprecedented act passed by Congress allows the U.S. to seize Russian assets held in American banks and redirect them to Ukraine. The move has not only angered Putin, but has also created a rift in global financial markets. In a direct response to the U.S. Congress passing the Repo Act, Putin has hit back hard. He's seized a staggering $500 million from J.P. Morgan, one of the biggest banks in the United States. This is no small thing. It's a head-on attack in what's becoming an all-out economic war between two of the world's most powerful countries. And J.P. Morgan is caught right in the middle of it as the first major U.S. bank to have its assets grabbed by Russia. But that's not even the worrying part. This could be just the beginning. Other big American banks are watching nervously to see if they'll be next in the firing line. There's a real fear that more U.S. financial giants could see any assets in Russia seized by an increasingly aggressive Russia. This tit-for-tat seizure of assets is uncharted territory, and the stakes couldn't be higher. The Repo Act itself is seen by many as a serious escalation from the U.S. side. Before it was passed, the hundreds of billions of dollars in Russian assets held in American banks were considered off-limits. But now the U.S. has given itself the power to take that money from Russia and, you guessed it, it's a move that enraged Putin and pushed tensions to a dangerous new level. Of course, Ukraine is thrilled with the idea of getting its hands on all those Russian billions. But here's the catch. Ukraine has a reputation as the most corrupt country in Europe. Even the U.S. State Department admits it. So flooding Ukraine with seized Russian money could be like throwing gasoline on a fire. Meanwhile, banks like J.P. Morgan are left to deal with the fallout. Losing half a billion dollars is a crushing blow for any business, even a mega bank. And with the threat of more asset grabs hanging over them, U.S. financial institutions are in a seriously precarious position. But here's the really scary part. This escalating economic conflict between the U.S. and Russia isn't just about banks and billions. If it keeps spiraling out of control, it could reshape the global financial order as we know it. The whole system of world trade that's been in place since World War II, with the U.S. dollar as the central pillar, is starting to crack under the strain. But Putin isn't stopping at just seizing American assets. He's also making a bold play to insulate Russia from U.S. financial pressure once and for all. How? By embracing the power of digital currencies. In a game-changing move, Putin has signed a new law that opens the door for Russian companies and the government itself to use cutting-edge digital financial assets for international deals. Why is this such a big deal? because it lets Russia sidestep traditional banking systems that have been dominated by the U.S. for decades. Russia is moving fast into the digital money world. Putin just signed a new law that lets Russian businesses and even the government itself use special digital assets for deals with other countries. This is a huge change that could shake things up in a big way. You see, for a long time after World War II, the U.S. dollar has been the most important money in world trade. Most international deals happen using dollars, and they have to go through banks and systems that the U.S. controls. But now, Russia is finding a way around that. By using these new digital currencies, Russia doesn't need to rely on the old dollar system anymore. They can make deals directly with other countries using this digital money, and the U.S. can't stop them or track what they're doing. 
It's like they're making their own secret pathway for money to flow around the world. This could be the start of something really big. If it works well for Russia, other countries might want to do the same thing. They could start using digital money more and more, and the U.S. dollar could become less important in global business. Putin seems to be betting big on this digital shift. He wants Russia to have more control over its own money and not have to worry about the U.S. causing problems. With this new law, he's given Russian companies the green light to jump into the world of digital currencies and start making deals. It's a kind of digital end run around U.S. power. You could bet that folks in Washington are watching this closely. What does this mean for the rest of us? It's hard to say for sure. Digital money is still pretty new, and there's a lot we don't know about how it will all play out. But one thing is clear, the world of money and global trade is changing fast. And countries like Russia are positioning themselves to be leaders in this new digital frontier. So keep an eye on this story. It might sound like boring financial stuff, but it could end up having a big impact on all of our lives. As more countries start to embrace digital currencies, everything from how we buy things online to how global business gets done could change. We're witnessing a shift that could define the future of money, and Russia is right at the center of it. But here's the thing. While this digital money move might help Russia in the short term, it's also raising some big questions and concerns around the world. After all, if countries start avoiding the U.S. dollar and dealing direct in digital currencies, what does that mean for global financial stability? Could it lead to more economic chaos and uncertainty? They're warning that Russia's actions could speed up a dangerous trend called de-dollarization, where countries start to lose faith in the U.S. dollar and look for alternatives. If that happens on a big scale, it could be a massive blow to U.S. economic power and influence. Think about it. If fewer countries want to use dollars for trade, that makes the dollar less valuable and important. And if the dollar loses its status as the world's most trusted and relied upon currency, that could change everything from the cost of the stuff we buy to the whole balance of power in global politics. So while Putin's digital money play might look like a clever move for Russia, it's got a lot of folks worried about the bigger picture. We could be looking at the start of a new kind of economic warfare, thought not with tanks and guns, but with digital currencies and financial trickery. It's a high-stakes game with trillions of dollars and the future of the global economy on the line. And right now, Putin is making a bold gambit that could reshape the rules of that game for years to come. The question is, how will the rest of the world respond? Will other countries follow Russia's lead and embrace digital currency as a way to challenge U.S. economic dominance? Or will they rally around the dollar and try to shore up the existing system? These are the kinds of questions that have experts and leaders around the globe on the edge of their seats. The moves being made now could set the stage for a whole new era of economic competition and conflict between nations. It's a story that's just starting to unfold, and the ending is far from clear. As Russia makes these bold moves with digital currencies, the rest of the world is watching closely, and some are getting worried. There's a lot of talk about how this could speed up something called de-dollarization, but what does that actually mean? Basically, de-dollarization is when countries start using the U.S. dollar less and less in their international deals. For a long time, the dollar has been the most important currency in global trade. But now some nations are looking for other options. They're concerned that the U.S. has too much power over the global economy because of the dollar's special status. If a country gets on America's bad side, the U.S. can use the dollar to put pressure on them, like freezing their assets or blocking them from the banking system. So when Russia starts using digital currencies to get around the dollar, it makes other countries think they should do the same. China, for example, has been working on its own digital currency for a while now. And they're not the only ones. There's a group of countries called BRICS, that's Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, who have been talking about using their own currencies more in trade with each other. They want to rely less on the dollar and have more control over their own economic futures. If more and more countries start following Russia's lead and using alternatives to the dollar, it could be a big problem for the U.S. It would make the dollar less important and powerful in the global economy. 
and that could hurt the U.S.'s ability to influence other countries and shape world events. After all, the dollar has been the bedrock of the global financial system for decades. If its role suddenly changes, it could be like pulling the rug out from under the whole world economy. That's why international organizations like the UN and the IMF are keeping a close eye on this situation. They know that rising tensions between the U.S. and Russia and the shift towards digital currencies could have far-reaching consequences for global economic stability. Other countries are also speaking out. Some are worried about getting caught in the middle of a U.S.-Russia economic war. They don't want to have to choose sides or get punished for trading with the wrong country. Others see an opportunity to challenge the dollar's dominance and gain more economic independence. But overall, there's a sense that big changes are coming to the global financial system, and fast. The world is watching closely as Putin makes his next moves. Will his bet on digital currencies pay off for Russia? And what will it mean for the U.S., the dollar, and the future of money itself? The answers to those questions could shape the global economy for years to come. But even as the world watches and worries, there's another side to this story that's getting a lot of attention. It's not just about the big players like Russia and the U.S. It's about something deeper, a fundamental shift in how we think about money and value in the digital age. Because when you look closely, you start to see that this isn't just a battle between nations. It's a battle of ideas, and it could change everything. So what exactly is at stake in this new era of digital economic warfare? The answer is de-dollarization. De-dollarization might sound like a fancy economic term, but it's actually pretty simple. For over 75 years, the U.S. dollar has been the most important money in the world. When countries buy and sell things to each other, they usually use dollars to make the deals. They do this because all countries trust the dollar, knowing it holds value across the entire globe. But now, some countries are starting to wonder if relying so much on the dollar is a good idea. They're worried that it gives the United States too much power over the global economy. If a country does something the U.S. doesn't like, America can use the dollar to punish them, like freezing their money or seizing it, just like they've done with Russia. That's where de-dollarization comes in. It's basically when countries start using other types of money instead of the dollar for their international deals. China, for example, has been working on making its own digital money, kind of like what Russia is doing. The idea is that if they have their own digital currencies, they won't need to use the dollar as much. They'll have more control over their own economies. Some money experts think that what Russia is doing with digital currencies could speed up this de-dollarization trend. If Russia can show that it works well for them, other countries might want to try it too. And the more countries that start moving away from the dollar, the weaker the dollar could become in the global economy. This is a big deal because the dollar has been the most important currency in the world for a really long time. If a lot of countries suddenly stopped using it as much, it could shake things up in a major way. It would make the dollar less powerful and could change the way the whole global economy works. Of course, the United States isn't too happy about this idea. They like being the top dog when it comes to global money. If other countries start using the dollar less, it could make it harder for the U.S. to keep its power and influence in the world. There's a lot of tension building around this issue. The U.S. is trying to protect its spot as the world's most important currency. It's like a big game of tug-of-war with the future of the global economy hanging in the balance. Will the dollar keep its crown or will digital currencies and other alternatives start to take over? It's a question that has a lot of smart people scratching their heads. As we gaze into the crystal ball of the global economy, it's clear that big changes are on the horizon. With Russia leading the charge into the brave new world of digital currencies and other nations watching closely, the future of money itself is up for grabs. So what could this mean for the way countries do business with each other in the years ahead? Well, for starters, we could see a lot more wheeling and dealing happening outside of the traditional banking system. If digital currencies like Bitcoin catch on, nations might start ditching the dollar in favor of BTC or a new currency. If more and more countries start saying thanks but no thanks to the U.S. dollar, America could find itself playing second fiddle in the global economic orchestra. But don't count Uncle Sam out just yet. The U.S. is a crafty old dog, and you can bet your bottom Bitcoin that it won't take this lying down.
Expect to see some serious deal-making as America tries to keep its currency king of the hill. The rise of cryptocurrencies and other alternative monies could alter the very foundations of the global financial system. We could see new power players emerge as countries that were once at the mercy of the dollar suddenly find themselves with a lot more leverage. This brave new economic world could be a real double-edged sword. On the one hand, it could lead to more fairness and competition, as countries are able to chart their own monetary destinies. But equally, it could also be a recipe for chaos and instability, as the old rules go out the window and everyone scrambles to adjust to the new reality. One thing's for certain, the next few decades are going to be a wild ride for the global economy. As digital currencies gain steam and the dollar's dominance is put to the test, we could be in for some serious turbulence. So what does all this mean for the future of money and global power? Putin's big move in digital currency is a direct challenge to the way things have worked for a long time. He would be happy to push the U.S. aside, but deep down knows that the ruble is not going to be strong enough or trusted enough by the world, so he cannot rely on it. Will we see Russian adoption of Bitcoin in an attempt to settle global trade in a currency that ultimately nobody has total control over? Have Russia been stockpiling and building mining operations so they can control the harsh rate of this new currency? Only time will tell, but it will sure make an interesting story. Countries that jump on the digital currency train early could find themselves with a lot more power and independence. In the end, the countries that are quick on their feet and open to new ideas will probably come out ahead. But those who try to hold on to the past could be in for a rough ride. It's a brave new economic world out there, and the rules are being rewritten as we speak. So keep your eyes peeled and your digital wallets ready. Things are about to get interesting. For a full story on how this could impact your bank account, be sure to check out our video on how banks are removing cash and moving us to an all-digital future. It's all connected, and you won't want to miss it.